<clears throat> How sweet and happy seem those days of which I dream when memory recalls them now and then. And with that rapture sweet, my weary heart would beat If I could hear my mother pray again If I could only hear my mother pray again If I could only hear her tender voice as then How happy I would be, t'would mean the world to me if I could hear my mother pray again. Within the old home place, her patient smiling face was always spreading comfort, hope, and cheer. And when she used to sing sweet praises to her king, it was the song the angels loved to hear. If I could only hear my mother pray again, if I could only hear her tender voice at then, how happy I would be, t'would mean the world to me, if I could hear my mother pray again. Her work on earth is done, the crown of life it won, and she will be at rest with him above. And some glad morning she, I know, will welcome me to that eternal home of peace and love. If I could only hear my mother pray again, if I could only hear her tender voice at the end, how happy I would be, t'would mean the world to me, if I could hear my mother pray again. If I could hear my mother pray again. Thank you, Brother Tom. And he said he just got, he ordered the music Wednesday, I think, and just got it either Friday, Thursday or Friday? Yesterday. You tell me, don't you believe the Lord sent him my way? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And, and again, I want to thank the Lord, too, uh, also for the mothers not only here, but we, I know we've got some out in the parking lot as well. I, I don't know for sure, but I believe Miss Hedrick might be out there and Sister Cordell and Vicki. And Carolyn and others, but we thank the Lord for them too. And if you get a chance when you leave, if they hadn't left, go out down and speak to them and tell them how much you appreciate them as well. All right, I want us to take our Bibles and go to a very familiar passage that we've used so many times before on Mother's Day as we honor and, and thank the Lord and, and give tribute to our mothers who are both here and those who have gone on to be with the Lord as well. Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31. I've used this many Mother's Day, but I've also used it at many, at many funerals. This was a text I used for my own mother's funeral, and I've used it for others as well. That is, if I know the person, the mother, that passed on, went home to be with the Lord, was saved, and then knew Christ. It was very fitting for them. And so I've used it at many funerals over the years, but it is a, a wonderful tribute that the Lord includes in the canon of Scripture in honor of mothers and wives. And, Mothers to be and such as that. But this is, a, as you'll see in the first verse, it says, the words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. Many theologians believe that King Lemuel was a name that Bathsheba, you know, the wife of David, gave to Solomon, the King Solomon. Anyway, and so she is telling him this is the kind, she's giving him various instructions, as you'll see if you read the first nine verses. But when she gets to verse 10, she'll say, Now when my son Solomon, Lemuel, when you begin to look you know, for a wife, someone to make you a wonderful queen, to support you, stand behind, this is the kind of woman you need to look for. And uh, as we see in verse 1, it, it's, they're very hard to find, she's saying, but they're out there. Okay, So I'm going to read this, and then I'm going to make a few comments on it as I go through it. 
And I, again, I hope this will just be a blessing to the mothers that are here and the grandmothers who are here. And not only here, but those who will be listening by radio and also to be watching us on YouTube, social media. Because just about every week someone will come to me and tell me that I heard you on the radio or watch it on YouTube and things like that. So I thank the Lord for the outreach that we even have, even beyond these walls. Probably a lot of people listen to these messages that we don't even know anything about. Sister Pam told me that she went to visit someone in, in Pennsylvania one time. And this whoever it was, she was sitting having lunch with her and she they mentioned her pastor's name. Her past she mentioned her pastor's name, which is mine. And this man said to her, I know exactly who it is. I, every time I go through that, like if I'm coming back, traveling to Salem or something, on Sunday evening, I turn at that radio station and listen to him. And she, he called my name and all. Isn't that amazing? That little bitty old radio station, it doesn't have very much of a, you know, that outreach, but a lot of people listen to it that we don't even think about. So beginning in verse 10, listen to what uh, uh, the mother of King Lemuel said to this king. Who can find a virtuous woman? And the word virtuous means a woman who is excellent in character, one who has uh, got strength and ability, and one who is loving and charming and such as that. But who can find one like that? Her price is far above rubies. That means jewels and pearls. In other words, she is priceless. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her. Uh, you know, he's got full confidence in her so that he shall have no need of spoil or lack of gain. Why? Because the scripture here says that she'll do him good and only good and not evil all the days of her life. He doesn't have to worry about her. She seeks wool and flax. She works willingly with her hands. That means when it says she works willingly with her hands, that means she does this joyfully and eagerly, not dreading it, not something to be dreaded, not to, do I have to do this? No, she loves doing this for her children, for her husband, for her family. And verse 14 says, she is, all, she is like the merchant ship. She brings her food from afar. That simply means that she knows and she looks to, uh, at places to find the best deals for the food. Uh, it goes on to say, she riseth also while it is yet night. She gives meat or food to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considers her field and buyeth it. In other words, she's industrious as well and very smart, intelligent. She considers a field and buys it with the fruit of her hands. She plants a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengthens her arms, which means she just works hard all the time, works vigorously all the time. Verse 18 says, She perceiveth that her merchandise, her gain is good, and her cattle goeth not out by night. You know, the other night, I was watching an episode of uh, Andy Griffith. Do y'all watch Andy Griffith? I loved watching him. But anyway, they just got through with the evening meal, and Aunt B was sitting there, and she dressed up so pretty. And I thought to myself, how in the world does she do it? I mean, she fixed breakfast, she, she fixed lunch, she fixed evening meals as well. Just like my parents used to do it, my grandparents. You look, and the reason it's hitting me now is because Lately, I'm having to do a whole lot of things I never thought I would have to do. You have to do it when your wife gets sick. And man, it makes me appreciate what she has done in the past that much more for me. And I wonder now, how in the world did she do it? I mean, I would just come in, and like many of you, listen, we would just come in, just like him. we just come in, you know, and we'd, we take for granted, don't we? Where's the supper? Where's the meal? And not thinking about all the... And many of them have to work, right? Many of the ladies have to work. But somehow or another, it's expected when we come in, we expect that meal to be on the table. No good, great, ungrateful. I'm thinking about myself now. But anyway, uh, this, this lady, this virtuous woman, a woman of moral, excellent character, she works all the time. She never stops. That's what it means here. Her candle goes not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold to the staff, which means she makes her own clothes for the family. She stretches out her hand to the poor. Yes, she, yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. She's not only concerned and has a heart for her own family, she, she's got a heart for those outside the home as well. As, as she sees the poor and those have needs, you know what she's going to try? She's going to try to meet those needs if she had. How many has had a mother like that? Or wife like that? Or grandma? We all have, haven't we? She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry, and her, her clothing 
is silk and purple, which means it's becoming her and her family. Verse 23 says this, Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. Now why do you suppose that is there, talking about her husband? I'll tell you why. Because he is envied. He is envied. Man, you've got a wonderful wife. And you are, and I imagine many of them said, you are blessed to have someone like this. That's what it means, there, and that's why it's thrown, thrown in there. And it goes on to say in verse 24, she makes fine linen and sells it. She delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor, or strength and dignity, are her clothing. And she shall rejoice in time to come. No fear of age for her. No, she got full confidence into, as time goes on. She opened her mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Which means she goes on and on and on and on. About like the, uh, what's that little bunny? What's that battery commercial? You know what I'm talking about? Energizer. Energizer. That's the way th this lady was. This is the way, honest, this is the way my wife was. That's the way my mother was. And my, and my uh, grandmother. They, they worked all the time. All the time, I, I think I thought about this as I was looking at this again this morning. We would go to the house every Sunday, and we would eat lunch. You know, we'd all flop in there. Angie, back there, she can tell you. We'd all go to Mama's house, and we'd just flop in there, and we would eat. And they'd be done cooked all this great, wonderful meal for that 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 time. And you know, and we would just sit there and eat, and then we would get up and clean up and get the dishes done. No, we didn't. We went down and sat down and watched television, looking for a ball game or something, while they were still, you know, cleaning up and everything. And most of the time, even if you tried, even if you tried to clean up, offer to clean up, do that, and they wouldn't have it. No, you go in there and sit down. You go in there and sit down. Yeah, all right, it goes on to say, look at verse 28. Let me read verse 27 again. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou, this lady, excels, excels them all. In other words, she surpasses all of them. Favor is deceitful. In other words, beauty is only skin deep, but ugly is to the bone. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. It's, in other words, when it says vain, it says beauty is fleeting. I mean, you know, uh, as sometimes as we age, sometimes we don't age gracefully. We know what that means, right? But the heart never changes. The heart is there, and that gets more and more wise and more and more beautiful as there. And all, elder ladies are beautiful as well, right? But he's making a point here. Be favor is deceitful. Beauty is vain. Now, but listen to what he says. But a woman, a woman like this lady here, that feareth the Lord. That means a woman that reverently worships Yahweh God. We would say today that reverently worships the Lord Jesus Christ and puts him first in her life. Listen, that woman is to be praised. She shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Isn't that a beautiful passage of scripture? I think that is God's tribute and, and honor to the, the ladies, the God of ladies, the ladies that will trust the Lord and put him first in their life. This is God's honor and tribute to them as well. But it's a beautiful passage of scripture to a faithful woman. A faithful woman to a family, to a husband. Woman, a woman of fidelity. A woman that has a family love. And so she should be praised. But again, Bathsheba, if it is Bathsheba, or the mother of Lemuel or Solomon, is telling her this is the kind of lady that you need to be your wife. And she'll do you only good all of your life. Now, I want to make a couple of observations here about this. Again, go back to verse 27 and 28. Look at that once again, if you would. Verse 27 says, She looks well to the ways of her household. Note that she looks well to the ways of her household. Now, we know that because we have just read all these previous verses. And it says here in these verses that, man, she, she feeds the family. She takes care of her family. She's up before dawn. She, she's uh, uh, way past when the lights go out. She's still working. She looks well for them. She makes clothes for her family. She's always got them on her heart, on her mind, her husband as well. So we know that she looks well to the ways of her household. But I think implied in this as well would be this. 
not only does she look well for them materially speaking, but I think this woman looks well to the spiritual ways of her household. Because it goes on to say here in verse 28, notice what it says. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. I think it could, and I, I, you know, we speculate about this. But I think it can be implied from this passage of Scripture here, probably this, that because of the, the godliness of this woman, because of the virtuous character of this woman, and because this is a woman to put Yahweh God first in her life, she feared Him, she walked with Him, she praised Him, she loved Him, she, she, uh, He was first in life. Because of that, I believe it must have had an effect upon those children, don't you? I believe it influenced them. I believe it inspired them. And I believe it probably persuaded them as they witnessed her growing up, as they watched her, as they observed her husband as well, you know, for them to start seeking the Lord and having a relationship like their mother did with the Lord, a relationship with the Lord for themselves. I'm going to tell you something. I've seen over the years, and I know you have as well, that I've seen many, many men come to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, not because of some message they heard, you know, from a preacher, I don't care how good they were, but they probably come to know the Lord because the, of the godly wife and mother in that home, you know, so influenced them and spoke to them and spoke volumes to them. And because of that, as they observed her chaste behavior and godliness and character, that probably led them into a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's happened many, many, many times. I grew up in Grace Baptist Church, and I can remember when Brother Jesse Mathis first started that church. About the only ones that he had come into that church at the time was some little kids and the mothers that brought the kids there and also some grandmothers that was there. And I can remember this in my younger days, seeing them praying for the men, praying for the husband, praying for the fathers. I mean, going to the altar. Back in those days, believe it or not, they went to the altar. Can y'all believe that? Back in those days, they went to the altar. And they prayed for their lost loved ones. I can remember, I can remember my Granny Hicks. Granny Hicks. This is before my dad was saved. She would come to that altar and she would weep and pray for Jean, my dad and her son. Because he was an alcoholic. I mean, she prayed for him and she never gave up. And my mother did as well. I can remember some of the other ladies, godly ladies in that church with Brother Jesse going to that altar and praying for their husbands, praying for their uh, husbands and grandfathers and such as that. And uh, they wouldn't come to church, but they'd make sure that the children would come to church and they would make sure that the mothers would carry the children to church. I mean, we're not going to go. It's not up to us. And boy, they're going to answer for that one day, right? As we know, and Father's Day is coming. But, uh, you know, the wife can carry the children to church, but uh, really the husband's the one responsible for that. He's the spiritual head of the family. But those godly saints of God, those mothers, those beautiful mothers, I can see them in my mind right now, going to that altar, bringing those children, bringing us to church, and praying for those husbands and wives. But I believe as I look at this, and I, I thought about this, her children will rise up. That means they are grown. They are grown, and they are thanking God, and they are praising their mother. They are praising mother here. And they called her blessed, and her husband also, and he praised her. In other words, they are thanking God for that God-given love that this godly woman had for them and what it meant for them in their life. Now, I say all that to say this to you today, the mothers who are here. The grandmothers who are here. The mothers to be who are here. The mothers who are listening by the radio. Those who will be watching by social, social media. I say all that to say this to you. I look at this and I think about the, the persuasion. I think about the influence. I think about uh, what it does to children growing up in the homes. You know, how much it sways them. How much it guides them. How much it shapes uh, their character for the rest of their life. And since that, and we know this is so, don't we? Since we know this is so, I think mothers today and grandmothers and such as that, adopted mothers, well, we need to realize, listen, that we are, we are in a war today. Do y'all realize that we are in a war today? And this is the worst kind of war. It's, the, it's, it's a war that is far worse far worse with more consequences, eternal consequences than either World War I, World War II, Civil War, any other war we've ever had. Vietnam War, Persian Gulf War, you name it, 
This war is way worse than any war we have ever endured. This is a spiritual war. It is a war, listen, it is a war led by Satan himself, the evil one, the wicked one, the one that Jesus our Lord called a liar, the father of lies, and a murderer from the beginning. He has mobilized all his satanic forces, listen, trying to damn as many souls as he can to a devil's hell. And I think he has turned on the heat in this day. You've got to believe that as well as you witness the culture that we're living in. As we, uh, and every day it gets worse and worse and worse. Brother Tom was talking to me about it this morning. About what some little children as young as three years old, they're giving them these transgender operations. Parents are doing that. Can you believe this? This is a war for souls and souls for your children. And somehow Satan has so so deceived the world today. He has so blinded the eyes of the world. And you can see this in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. That the God of this world, little g, the God of this world, that is Satan himself, has blinded the eyes of those who do not believe. He's blinded the eyes. They don't even know what they're doing in a sense. Because he's got them so depraved and blinded uh, with the culture today. He, somehow he has so blinded them and deceived them that he's got the media He's got the forces of the media. He's got the forces of Hollywood. He's got the entertainment industry. He's got a political party, the so-called political progressives. I don't even think they even know what they're doing. He's got Marxist parties like BLM, Black Lives Matter, and Antifa and such parties as that. And what are they doing? They're trying to, trying, trying to really to overthrow this government, I believe, and destroy everything, as I said last week or week before last. It's even got a hint of our Christian heritage on it. They're trying to destroy that. So it is a war for souls. So mothers, moms, grandmothers, listen, grandmothers, mothers to be, adopted mothers, whoever you are, you have got, you are probably, and I mean this from the heart, you are probably the strongest weapon in the hands of the Lord that he has got today. We hear all the time that we ought to, you know, try to put God back in the schools, try to put Bible back in school, try to put the prayer back in school. But you know where the best place to start that is? It's in the homes. In the homes led by godly, Jesus-loving, sin-hating, soul-loving mothers in the home. And fathers as well. That's exactly right. But I'm telling you, folks, we are in a war. We are in a conflict I was thinking about this. I started doing a message this morning on mother, does your mother wear combat boots? <laughs> you remember that used to be a joke, right? And we, we got different opinions about women, ladies being in combat. I ain't too crazy though, but as I've studied the past history of this country, the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, it was many women fighting in, in, the, fighting in those wars just like men are today. And I thank God for them. You can find that if you do a little history and research on that. But you know, mothers need to put on the combat boots today. I'm talking about the mothers in the home. And do this. Do everything you can, mothers and grandmothers, to win your children to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. You do it while they're young. Just like Timothy. And we can look at other examples in the Bible. We think about Hannah with Samuel. We think about probably Ruth, you know, who became the grandmother of David. We think about ones like that. We think about others. Mary, for example. And you might say, well, gee, it's, it's Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, though, he grew in stature. He had learned obedience by the suffering he had to do. He had to learn growth. So I'm sure Mary, his godly mother, taught him the scriptures, you know. And, and she said she's a mother that loved him. So we can look at others. But I'm looking at you today and the influence that you have today. So win your children to a saving knowledge of the Lord and start when they are young, very young, even in the cradle. Even in the womb, you start reading the Bible and quoting Scripture and do everything you can to bring them up to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Win them. Because they get a certain age, you know this as well as I do. They get a certain age and what's going to happen to them? They're gone. I look at my years. I mean, my mother, thank God for my mother. She carried me to church when, uh, when I was a little bitty fellow. When Wesley Methodist Church started in our neighborhood, she carried me up there. Then when they moved and built that building up on uh, Orville Street, I don't know if you know where that's not, but my mother carried me up there, and she made me sit down and behave 
and not talk, not even chew gum, and make sure I listened to that preacher. My mama did that. My daddy wouldn't carry me because he hadn't come to the Lord. And then when Brother Jesse started Grace Baptist Church, just two houses up from where we were, I had to go to church on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night. If church was going on, guess where I was? I was there. And I went. And I had some great Sunday school teachers. I had a great preach. I heard the word of God. And it influenced me and impacted my life. But, but, but. Well, guess what happened to me when I got up about 13, 14 years old? I'm not proud of that, but I went crazy. I went crazy. The point I'm trying to make is, if you're going to win your children to the Lord, you better do it while they're young. You better do it while they're young. So, Mother, if I, if I was you, mothers, I would say this to you today. I'm giving you a challenge now. I would look at these words again. I would meditate upon them. And no, you can't do it on your own, in your own strength, in your own ability. You know, we have to have the Spirit of God. Amen. What was the secret of her success? We find it in verse 30 again. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman, a woman that feareth the Lord. That just simply means that she had a relationship with Yahweh God. She loved Yahweh. That fear of the Lord, she shall be praised. You can't do it in your own strength. You can't do it in your own power. We are frail. We are, we are finite beings. And we've got the weakness of the flesh. We've got fallen nature. We need the Lord, don't we? In the power of the Holy Spirit to do this. But we can pray. We can lead. We can win our children, our, our grandchildren to the Lord. If we don't do it, who is going to do it today? Again, look at what they're doing. Start in school now when they're little bit of things. I don't know if they're doing it around here or not. I hope not. But start in school now. They're teaching the very things that's antithetical to the word, the things that's taught in the word of God. We can get in trouble by just telling people today from the pulpit of what the Bible says, calling sin, sin. Right? And they're taking the very things that we know that the Bible is clear on that God abhors and detests and says is wrong and sin and will send a soul to hell for it. They are teaching this as, this. don't pay any attention to this. This is what you need to know. So truth is out the door and all kind of error and things that will lead a person to hell is taught to our kids today. So I'm telling you, you better teach your children. We are in a war. We are in a war. And this war has... As I said a few minutes ago, eternal consequences, right? Not just for the time being, eternal consequences. So win your little ones to a saving knowledge of Jesus. Start right now as we pray. We're going to pray in a moment. First of all, if you do not have a relationship with the Lord Jesus, if you've never trusted him and received him as your Savior and Lord, if you've got any doubts about that, I'm going to ask you to stand in just a moment. You pray right now. You ask the Lord Jesus to save you. The Bible says we've all sinned and come falling short of the glory of God. But the good news is God loves us so much he sent his son to die for us in our place. Jesus came. He suffered. He died on the cross of Calvary. And he, but he was raised from the dead on the third day. And by that, God is saying, this is a plan of, my plan of salvation for you. If you will trust the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ... Trust Him and Him only for your Savior, you'll be saved. Amen? In repentance and faith. So if you're not sure about that, make sure this morning. Or if, you, if these words have spoken to you about uh, maybe your walk with your children, before your children, maybe you need to ask the Lord today as we're praying. Lord, I want to be a better parent. I want to be a better grandparent. I want to bring my children to Christ. I want to do whatever it takes. I want to be a godly mother or grandmother. I want to win my husband. Uh, to the Lord. Whatever it is, you know, if you'll trust the Lord and plead with Him, He'll give you what you need so you can do that. Let's stand with our heads bowed and eyes closed as they're coming to prepare just a couple of stanzas of invitation on the uh, piano and organ. I'll be here at the front. If you need to come down, you come and meet me at the front. And Heavenly Father, we come to you today, and Lord, we just want to, first of all, thank you for our mothers that are here our grandmothers that are here, and even those, Lord, that have gone on to be with you. I've got a godly mother, godly grandmother that's with you now in heaven. And, Lord, how they are missed. But I just, again, we just want to thank you for all of them, Lord. Many here today, uh, no doubt, many here today, many listening by radio, many listening, be watching by social media, 
has lost mothers who've gone on to be with the Lord. And I know this is a, a day that brings back so many memories. But we just want to thank you for them, Lord, what they meant to us. Thank you for their influence. Thank you for how they shaped and molded us, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for them. And Father, we, but we pray now for the mothers who are here today. And not only the mothers, but everyone, Lord, who's listening to this. If there's any mother or anyone else, Lord, who has never for sure completely trusted Jesus and received him as their Savior, Lord, I pray that even while I'm praying right now, they would turn to you and ask you, Lord Jesus, to be their Savior and their Lord. And, Lord, in repentance and faith, they would come to you and you would save them today. For any other needs that they might have, Lord, uh, a closer walk with you, whatever it is. Perhaps some needs just recommit their life to you, rededicate their life to you. Maybe some has read this passage of Scripture with us today and say, I want to be like this godly, virtuous mother, but I need the strength of the Lord to do that. I can't do it in my own strength. And I know, Lord, that you're a God who loves us, who cares for us, who hears us, and we call upon you, Lord, you answer according to your will. And we know it's your will for us to live in obedience to you. So, Father, I pray that you meet every need as we pray today. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.